Hi everyone, Raquel here from Scrap Cozy. Today I'm bringing you my version of bunting or banner for the current Paper Artsy Fortnite challenge, which is called Banners and Bunting. I'll be using infusions, distress oxides, jelly plate, and I'll create even my own NML dots. Many techniques in this project. Okay, let's get started. I start with a piece of smoothie cardstock, the heavy one, and I've applied some golden sands on top of it. Then I sprinkled some water and now I'm using a brush to cover the entire surface. I want it yellow because I will stamp on top and that will let me have my stamped image already colored. I'm now heat setting it so I can actually stamp. I'll be using archival ink, potting soil, and I'll be using the new stamping platform by Tim Holtz, using it in the rubber side, because the stamps that I'm using are rubber and not clear, so they are thicker. If you use clear stamps, you need just to switch the lid on the other way, so you can read clear. So now I'm stamping the first image, which is the seahorse. This is very detailed. And you will see that it stamps, but it doesn't stop stamp very sharp. So I'm going to use the platform to stamp in twice exactly in the same position. As you see, it's a bit clear. But now with the second inking, it will be perfectly sharp. It's my first time using it, so I'm still not used to it very much. But it works very well. Can you see? Now it's very sharp. So I'm going now to stamp other images. Octopus, the crab, the fish from the other set, many of them. Well, all of them actually. <laughs> and then you can stamp them in one go. And you just need to ink them. Again, I'm using archival. Since I'm not going to actually apply anything else on top, I could use any type of ink. All of them would be fine. I don't need them to be waterproof or anything. But since I will be stamping with same ink in other places, then I decided to just stick to this one. And if something didn't stamp right because it's in the platform and it's exactly in the same position, you can stamp again and again. So I'll continue stamping in the same position and once I'm happy with some of the images, if they are perfectly sharp, I remove them. But those two, they need another impression. Perhaps it's because they are slightly thinner one from the other because they are from different sets. So maybe that's the reason. Final stamping and that will be it. super sharp images. I like it very much. So now it's time for cutting. Yes, cutting everything. So it's going to take me ages, but don't worry. I will just forward the video and just jump all that fussy cutting. I'm just showing you how I'm cutting here the scallop. It's the easiest one, <laughs> if you want me to say. But the octopus, oh my gosh, it took me ages to cut all those little legs and the crab as well. well. All of them, they have so much detail to cut, but it's worth it. They look very nice. So now in this step, what I'm doing is inking the edges. And for that, I'm using the regular distress ink, not the oxide, the normal one. What I'm doing with this is just covering those edges because they looked white. And I'm going to also add a little bit more of texture and volume. My next step is creating a pattern paper and for that I'm using the journal um, text from the other stamp set and I'm repeating it everywhere all over the place. So I'm shifting it a little bit from one to the other and then I will continuously stamp all over the place. This will be in the background and in this case I'm using archival because on top of this, I'm going to apply some ink, some water, and I really want my stamp image to stay. 
So now I'm going to use some oxides. I'm using re-inkers and then I'm also using the ink pad. So I'm using their um, anti-glinen, yes, and then some walnut stain and vintage photo re-inker. I find that it's much easier to use the re-inker because it obviously <laughs> dispenses more ink and then it's more fluid so it well reaches all over the place. So after that first layer I'm starting to heat set and at the same time I'm applying some water and removing some excess with a paper towel. And again more heat, more water, more removal of dots and the more water and the more um, heat that you apply well the more texture you get so for this step you have to be patient and just repeat and repeat and repeat until you actually get whatever you like in my case i decided to play with just two colors of ink well actually three but the the anti-cleaning is very in the back so basically it's not very well seen it's very behind let's say but Walnut Stain and Vintage Photo, they combine very well and they actually add different tones of that brown. I love browns. <laughs> and then if there are some white layers, what I'm doing there is just applying with a sponge dauber the ink directly into my paper. And once I have that, what I'm going to do is cut it into pieces and I cut it with that frame that you see over there. I put an A plate, a B plate, then I put the die on top of my paper, which is, it has like um, like a fo fox stitching around, which will look very nice, you'll see. And then the C tip plate on top, running through the cattle bag and it's cut. So I've cut different pieces, as you can see there, and what I'm going to do is ink up the edges. Again, with regular Vintage Photo Distress ink. With this step, apart from removing the white edges and adding some volume and some shading, what we are doing is highlighting that fox stitching, which is very well seen now that you apply the ink. And I like it very much how it turns out. And it also fades a little bit that chalky finish from the um, Distress Oxide inks, which I like, but sometimes, you know, it's a bit too white. <laughs> So now it's time for jelly printing. Here I'm fast forward, I'm doing it very fast because basically these are just tests that I was doing with different colors, different textures, different stencils and finishes. So until I actually got something that I liked and that I could repeat five times to get more or less a similar finish for me to create the backgrounds of my banner. Here is when I decide that actually I like very much the combination of the scales and the bubbles and I really like these two inks, just the buff and I think it's pea coat, the, that uh, bluish. So I decide to stick to those and then well, play around with them and once I figure out what I like then you will see me that I will start with a new fresh sheet and then I'll take it more slowly so you can actually have a look and see how this looks and it's so addictive to play with the jelly plate and you don't realize but after starting you finish up with a bunch of papers all over the place and it seems that the paper is eaten by this <laughs> little thing because you use so many sheets so here I'm going to do it slowly First I apply my buff color, which is the um, cream color. That will be in the very front, okay? Whatever you put underneath is whatever you see first, okay? Then I'm adding some of that uh, gauze or yeah, the little fabric on top. That means that I'm removing ink, okay? So that will be transparent if I just press now the jelly plate, okay? Same with the scales, I'm applying those, so the lines that define the scales are now transparent. And then with the bubbles, it's the other way around, okay? Now I'm applying the blue on top. That means that the blue will go on those spaces and will cover those gaps. And also, because I apply a very thin layer, you will be able to see a light blue, not as sharp as what you saw. 
Actually, if you turn down Jelly Blade, you can see what you're going to get because it's transparent, <laughs> okay? So if you press very hard and you are patient and massage it very, very well, you are going to get everything back to the paper, okay? You need to press very well and you will get it there. So now I'm repeating the same again. My light color first, then I remove some of it with the stencils and with my texture, which is that little piece of gauze. And then I'm adding that snail over there. And once I'm happy, I will apply the blue on top. And then I will press the jelly plate onto my paper. Okay, and then now because the brayer was still loaded, I decide to start the other way. I put the blue first and then I remove some of it with my stencils and again the same piece of fabric. And I put the cream one instead on the background. So I kind of get the negative of it. It's very subtle the difference, but I guess you can appreciate it, right? And now again, I do it the other way because my braid was loaded with cream. I apply cream first, then all the texture and then the blue. So I'm going to repeat this over and over again. And as I said, it's really addictive, especially if you're trying to achieve like more or less five same patterns because if you don't get them then it's like okay let's try again with this variation and hmm, maybe I need to put more pressure here or remove a little bit more paint there so you just start and it seems like you're not going you're not going to finish but it's very nice because you know what you're going to get roughly but sometimes it's like okay let's see what comes and it really has lots of texture because it doesn't print perfectly okay. The jelly plate itself gives texture as well. Can you see how many I have? So I think I have enough. And then my next step is actually getting five pieces. I tear each side of them. So then I have tiered edges, okay? Having straight sides was a bit boring. So I thought this would add a little bit more texture. And then what I'm going to do is ink up those edges again with Distress Oxide Vintage Photo and I'm applying on all of them. So that would what, remove that white edge and it will also bring everything together because I'm using that same shade of brown everywhere on the board that we created that pattern paper with the pieces that I cut so it won't match and now I'm going to add a little bit more texture by stamping that seaweed on top and bottom of those pieces of, of the bunting and you will see me that I will be stamping two parts at the same time just to try to well not waste so much time and ink <laughs> although my craft sheet is going to finish super dirty but that's okay with a little bit of rubbing alcohol it just goes away or you can also use hand sanitizer that works well as well so I'll carry on adding more texture to my bunting until I'm happy with it. So I've done the bottom part and now I'm going to do the top part as well. So I'm just twisting them and repeating my stamping here and there. Again, I'm using archival. I don't need to use archival because actually I'm not going to do any water coloring or anything. But because it was the same ink that I was using while stamping the images, and it's in the same well, color palette that I'm using, then it's fine. And now I'm combining that with the pieces that I did to see how they look 
and I'm going to cut them in half so it's not going to be a frame it's going to actually be a top and bottom semi frame if you want to call it on this piece of bunting and to make sure I cut straight I'm just using that middle part of the banner and then they are done so I'm putting one top and bottom to see how they look and I think I like them I'm going to clean my surface so I said with water doesn't work so now I'm spritzing some rubbing alcohol and that works wonders <laughs> And now to coordinate everything, I'm using again some golden sands, water, and I will be tinting some lace, the one that I have on the left. So it's just a matter of dyeing it with the infusions mix, making sure that it gets very wet on that mix. And then you could let it air dry, but I'm impatient. <laughs> so then I'm going to heat set it with the heat tool and some tweezers. Be very careful, it gets very hot, so you want to use tweezers. So I'm rolling it up and down, and while rolling it, I'm applying some heat. You need to be very careful, depending on the lace that you're using, if it has some plastic component or something, it's going to melt. So don't apply lots of heat. Be careful and try it in a tiny part if you want first, just to see how it reacts, and if it works fine, then go for it so I'm going to heat set all of them you'll see that the, the color changes to a bit lighter but then if I compare it to the original lace they are completely different one is vintage the other one is perfectly new <laughs> so I love vintage I love destroyed <laughs> and aged so it will look very nice with my bunting so now I'm going to put all the pieces together just to see, arrange them, how they look. And I will combine them with metallic elements and see how they will be arranged in the final bunting. So some here, some there. I like my animals to actually hang a little bit out of the bunting. You will see that I will stick them hanging out. And then I will put some metallic elements on each piece and some other little ones in the middle of the bunting. I will attach those with some uh, thread. I don't like to use glue when I use metallic elements because I have the feeling that they are going to fall. So I prefer to actually stitch them to make sure that they don't move. So once they have, I have decided that I take a picture normally of my composition so I can go back and remember how it was and then I start assembling. I've applied some double side tape to fix my lace there and then I've cut with the scissors as you saw. Now I'm fixing it to the bottom just slightly to see how it looks and to see where I want it and then I'll just put also the top part see how that looks so now I'm going to stitch the metallic element one of those I think that with three stitches is more than enough so I try to locate the stitches where it makes sense in each figure let's say so for this one I'm going to apply on the top once I pass the first one instead of making any knot I'm just applying some cell tape so then it's flat and it doesn't stick out or makes any bumps or anything then the next stitch is going to be down to secure it very well I don't want it to move sometimes I want them to move for more well I don't know inter interactive <laughs> uh, thing but this one I wanted to stay there so I'm applying three stitches and with that it will be perfectly perfectly okay and the thread that I'm using is, is a type of brown. It's between brown and gold and it's very well, well, camouflaged <laughs> if you want to call it. And now I'm going to apply the top part and the seahorse. And this one is going to be my base bunting. 
so whatever size I decide with this one I'm going to copy it with the rest and what I'm doing here is trying to stick my seahorse so part of the animal is out of the bunting that will add even more texture I'm going to assemble that with some Mod Podge this is my go-to glue I don't know I like it very much because it dries very quickly and it's very secure I don't know I like it so I'm putting it there but I'm moving it fast just want to make sure that it's in the right position and once it's there and okay I'm going to apply a little bit more of Mod Podge and I tell you that once it's dry, it's dry and it doesn't move at all. <laughs> so you want to be quick if you're pushing hard, okay? So I'm just sticking that there. And a little bit more. And that's it. And that baby seahorse as well so the same that I've done for this one I will repeat on the rest basically stitching all the metallic elements and gluing the lace with a double side tape and the top and the bottom also with Mod Podge and this is the result so I've put that there this is the seahorse that you saw already some more stitching and the stars, not the sea stars, but the other stars, they are kind of like brats, so they don't need to be stitched. They just need to be, well, they have hive holes. Now we're going to do the enamel dots. I'm showing you two there that were like pearl, pearlescent. But now we are going to do some metallic ones. So I'm going to apply some UTE, the clear one, and some wool embossing powder and I'm putting that there in that tray and heating it from behind now I'm speeding up the video a lot a lot so it takes a long time to actually melt it and then what you need to do is make it drip so every drop is going to be you an enamel dot okay and this combination of colors gives you like a marble effect I'm going to show you pictures later so you can see a close-up of those if the drops that you get are not perfectly round, that's okay. This is plastic, it can be melted again and you can do a second try, okay? So don't worry. Just be very careful because it's very hot. I learned this technique from Marion Emerson. She's from WO and she showed it to me at Stitches. It was so, I mean, I love the idea that you can create your own enamel dots and if you have embossing powder in any color, well, basically, that's the color that you will get with your enamel dot and you can apply it anywhere. Here I'm moving away the ones that I like and the ones that I don't like because they are not very round. I'm going to collect them together and then I'm going to remail them. And with this technique, you end up with many, many dots. <laughs> so, I mean, it's very good if you actually need, need a lot of dots. If not, you just need to put less... Um, less uh, powders and you will get less dots so the, here are the results can you see the marble effect and this is how they look once attached they seem even a brat isn't it okay so now I'm putting some combinations to see how they look and I'm going to add the final touch to my bunting so as you can see I'm applying it with some glossy accents and I'm sticking them they stick very quickly then I'm going to do two holes on each piece of the bunting and I'm going to pass some brass chain from them so then I tie them together and that's it the bunting is finished thanks very much for watching I hope you liked this project and uh, you enjoyed how I share it with you if you really liked it, please give me a thumbs up, give me a comment, I love to read them and subscribe to my YouTube channel if you haven't done so, so you don't miss any of them. 
I have many videos explaining many techniques, so just have a look around and enjoy. Thanks very much and see you in the next one. Bye!